Hey folks, today we're going to go over Tinkercad and just kind of look at what makes this thing awesome. Uh, a couple things real quick, this is the dashboard, this is what you'll get into when you get started, and all you have to do is create new design. As that's loading up, uh, Tinkercad is freely available, it works on pretty much everything, Mac, Windows, Chromebooks, it's great, it's designed for 3D printing and 3D modeling, it's, it's a great tool. Uh, so to start off here, uh, this is what it looks like whenever you load up a new part, drawing, whatever. This is what it is. Uh, so you're going to have your Tinkercad logo up in the top left-hand side, which will take you back to the dashboard. And you'll have a randomly generated name that you can click on and change if you would like. Now, across the other side here, uh, there's this gray bar that has a whole bunch of grayed out icons. Those will become more important later. But for right now, we don't have to worry about them because we can't do anything with them. Uh, we have our view cube here and if you've ever used an autodesk product which is the company that makes this it's on most of their drafting software uh, so basically as we rotate around i can click on front and it will rotate the view here uh, to be on front if i click on a corner i can see all the sides uh, i can also click hold and drag on here and rotate around by the same token i can right click on my mouse and i can rotate around and if you're on a laptop that's two fingers down to right click you can do the same thing and you notice as i rotate through the view cube matches the work plane, which is this blue gridded area that we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, if you want to go to the home view, just click on that, which is going to be the top and front view, kind of looking down straight at an object. You have a view to fit, which you can hit letter F for, uh, and that will make more sense once we start working on items here. Uh, you can zoom in and out with these plus and minus buttons. You can also scroll with your mouse wheel or two fingers on your laptop will do it as well back and front, uh, and then you can change the view it's in. So by default, it's in perspective view. You can change it to an orthographic view, which is what I personally prefer because I think it looks a whole lot better. Uh, moving over here, uh, we have our work plane, ruler, and notes. We're not going to worry about those right now, but I'll show you what they do in just a sec. Uh, and then we have uh, our shapes. So you have basic shapes, which are all of these. Uh, most of the time, these are all I need. Uh, but you can go to the drop down here, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, so if you need text and numbers, you click on that. You can get each individual item if you'd like. Uh, if you need, uh, let's say, some connectors, they have some pre-made connectors. Uh, and all this stuff is made up for 3D printing. So let's go over to printables and I wanna look at the Smithsonian. Uh, these are all items from the Smithsonian Institute that are ready to be 3D printed. Uh, so if I wanna grab, let's say an Apollo command module, I can do that. All I have to do is click, hold and drag and bring it over. Depending on the size of the model, it may take longer or shorter to load up. Uh, and then I can just right click and view through this thing and you can see how cool this really is. Uh, and if I wanna get rid of it, all I have to do is click on it and you'll see these bounding boxes around it. And then I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard. Uh, there's also an undo button up here if you wanna do that. But we're gonna go back to basic shapes because that's what we're really focused on. And I'm gonna to go to home view just to kind of get everything back to where it would be if we started. Uh, so to begin with, uh, you'll see that we have a box, a cylinder, and then box and cylinder again. Uh, these two are the same and different at the same time. They're the same because if I drag one here, box, and I drag another box over, they're the exact same size, shape, and look. The only difference here is one has these lines, the other one doesn't. And that's because it's called what's called a hole. Uh, basically, this one is a solid shape. This one is the absence of that shape. And it doesn't do anything right now, but in just a moment, we'll explain what that does. Uh, but before we do that, we wanna change this and just kind of get it to be a size and shape that we want. Uh, so what I can do is I can click on any of these little gray bounding areas. Uh, there are four throughout the bottom, and then there's another one here. And what that one does is changes the height of the object. Uh, I'm gonna change the height and width and depth. Uh, so let's say I want this, instead of being 20, I want it to be uh, 40, so I can just click on that. And then my width, instead of being 20, let's say I also want that to be 40. And now I'm gonna to go to my height, which is this one right here, and that's gonna be 10. Uh, so I've just changed the entire size, shape of all of that, and I don't have to type in numbers. I can just drag this around, and it will show me the numbers that it is there as well. Uh, when I have a shape highlighted, you're gonna see that we have this shape box over here, and this is the properties. Uh, right now it has no radius, but as I increase the numbers, you'll see that the rounded areas on here kind of change. So let me go back in here and I'll start increasing the radius and you'll see all those hard edges start rounding over. Uh, so you can really go through and see a bunch of different things here. Uh, and as I change the number of steps as well, uh, this basically is how many calculations it's doing to make the curved surface. By default, it's at 10. If I decrease that, you notice that all of these edges get a whole lot harder. Um, it's a little tough to see, but you see that they're much more angular. If I go back in there, increase the number of steps, 
you'll see it starts looking much, much, much more rounder. Uh, and this is just basically how it's calculating the amount of curve on there. But you can see these lines on the edges here. Uh, as I decrease, they're gonna get farther and farther spaced apart. And as I increase the number of steps, they'll get closer together. Nothing big deal for what we're doing, uh, but it is important to know if you're 3D printing and you don't have like nice smooth surfaces, change the number of steps and increase it. Uh, length, width, and height, I don't really mess with those, uh, but essentially they're multipliers of everything here. Uh, so that's the basic idea of how we change that. We can go through and change all of those pieces. Uh, we also are able to freely rotate this object. Uh, so this object ex exists in 3D space, so we're able to rotate it three different ways. You'll see down here, when I have the bounding boxes highlight, I have three different arrows, and these are curved arrows. So this one's gonna change it left to right, this one's gonna change it on its vertical axis, and this one will change it on its horizontal axis. So if I go through and rotate, and all I'm doing is clicking, holding, and dragging, I can also click on this if I want, and then go and click on the number. And let's say I wanna change that 90 degrees, it'll rotate it straight up. You'll also notice as I did that, now I have part of this thing existing below the work surface. Uh, and I try to not have this happen. Uh, mainly if I'm doing something for 3D printing, it can't be below this surface, it's gonna get cut off. Uh, so I wanna make sure everything is above that surface. And to do that, what I can do is find this little black arrow. In this case, it's at the bottom. Sometimes, like on this one, uh, it will be on top. It depends on kind of where you're looking at everything. You see how it rotated on top here. Now it's on top. Uh, so I'm just gonna drag this up and you'll see it's a negative number because the part itself is below space right now. So as I bring that all the way up, it'll be at zero. Now I no longer have anything underneath of there. Uh, so really easy to kind of maneuver and change things. Uh, just try to make sure everything stays on top of the work plane. Now let's talk about this other box here. Uh, we'll notice in the shape properties, there's solid and then there's hole. And in this case, hole is highlighted. If I go to the red box that I have, uh, it has solid highlighted. So when I click on that now, uh, on the whole one, a uh, hole is highlighted, and I'm just gonna drag this inside of that part. You'll see that I have a couple of measurements and it's related to how it is from the original spot, but we're gonna really worry about what we wanna do here. Uh, and what's gonna happen here is I wanna cut this thing out of the red shape. In order to do that, I need to do something called grouping them, uh, which is essentially combining two things together to be one. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. The, my most preferred method is just click, hold, and drag, and drag over both of the items. And you can do this with as many items as you have. In this case, we only have two. Uh, when we do that, you'll see that it says shape and with an S, so shapes, and in parentheses two, and it gives me a cell and a hole. Uh, I can go through and group them or hit control G. And when I do that, it's gonna combine them and cut out that whole shape. So I went through and I was able to cut it out. Now, when I go through and let's say change the height of this, it locks everything together. These things are permanently here locked together as far as we're concerned. Uh, so let's go and undo all that. I just hit control Z or you can use your undo button. Uh, and let's just play here and let's make this a little taller. And then I'm gonna go through and highlight them again and I can hit group. The other way to group them is just to click on one and then hold your shift key and click on the second one. It'll again say shapes and then you can group them together. And so I have them there. Let's say I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to make a change, but I, 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 for whatever reason I can't undo. All I have to do here is click on that item and go to ungroup and I can go back and do it. Uh, so I'm gonna group them back together uh, and I have my item set up there. What I can also do here is I can change the color. So if I click on that and go to solid, I can click on it and there's a whole bunch of colors available to me. Uh, it's not infinite. These are the uh, kind of choices you have. You can go over into a custom color, uh, but still I think it's easier to stay in this realm uh, for most things. Uh, red is always gonna be the default color for boxes and each shape here has its own default color that it goes to. Uh, as you group items together, so let's say this rounded roof, I wanna put this on here. Uh, how thick is this object? So it's 10. So I'm gonna have this one go back 10 to match up there. Uh, we have this being a total of 40 wide. So I'm gonna do the same thing and make it 40 wide. So I've been 10 and 40. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it up. So I wanna see how tall this is. And it tells me it's 40 tall. So as I drag this up, I'm gonna drag that up a total of 40. And now what I can do is I can drag it over to kind of match on top. You can see it lines up there, and then I'll just highlight both of those. I can group them, and it changes the color of both of those items now to be one thing, because it's considered a single item, so it's gonna change the color to set to be 
whatever the default one is. Uh, I'm going to undo that real fast uh, and just talk about one other thing we can do. Um, trying to get these lined up sometimes can be a little bit of a pain depending on what sizes you're using. Uh, and you can use the ruler tool here to help you out. So once you have ruler, you can set where you want the kind of origin point to be, which I'm going to put on this bottom corner. And now you can see that I have it set on this one here. So I can see how far away it is from my original set. So it's zero. Uh, this corner is zero away and it's also zero in height. If I click on and this one, I can also see it's zero away. So let's move it away from there. And you can see I have it being it's total of 40 wide. It's 10 uh, millimeters away from that original point and it's negative one. So it's actually closer to me, the user, than farther back uh, than what that original point is. And I can see that it's 40 up. Uh, so I can move that around to wherever I want. Uh, I can also type in these numbers uh, to get them set wherever I need to. And then once I'm done with that ruler, I can dismiss it and get rid of it. Uh, it's really quick and easy to do. Uh, and again, just go ahead and group these together. Uh, if you want to keep them separate colors, let's say I really like this color combination, uh, but I don't want to group them together because I want to visually see the different colors. What I can do is highlight both of them uh, and I can go over to the lock button. And when I go to lock, now I'm no longer able to change the size, shape, or anything else. Uh, the only thing I'm able to really edit is the color. So it gives me the option of going through and changing small pieces of this thing, but not everything. Uh, so I can go through here and see lots of different stuff. Uh, I'm going to put this into an isometric view, and then I'm also going to switch it over into orthographic, which is a true isometric instead of being perspective. Now you can see how I'm kind of far away, and maybe I want to get an up-close view. I can zoom in here, but sometimes it doesn't zoom where I want it to do. Uh, so I can hit the letter F or fit view, and it now allows me to see the full isometric of this thing uh, set in there, ready to go. Uh, and then when I'm done, uh, it automatically saves, so I don't have to do anything as far as that goes. I can import other items from here if I want, so I can bring over STL, OBJ, and SVG files. Uh, SVG file is going to be for laser printing uh, or flat items, not anything 3D. Uh, I can also export this, so if I want to go ahead and export this, I can get it ready to go as an OBJ for 3D printing or an STL, and that's usually the one that I uh, go through and use. Uh, you can use a GitLef as well, uh, and, or an SVG. They also have some help information available for you there. Uh, when you go over to 3D Print, they have teamed up with 3D Printing Services, so you can actually send to a printer directly from here or order a print directly from there, which is pretty cool. Uh, finally, you can also go to Send To. Uh, this allows you to download an image. You can bring this right into other Autodesk products like Fusion 360, or if you're a teacher or doing anything else, you can send it off these other 3D service communities uh, and do all kinds of stuff. You can also share it with people so that they're able to work on and change items as well. Uh, when I click back on the Tinkercad icon here, it'll take me back into my dashboard and you'll see that I have my item here. It will take a second or two to generate a preview, but it'll generate a kind of thumbnail of what your design was. And you'll actually be able to design, see, and spin it through here. Uh, you can view it in 3D and do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, you can also download or tinker right from here. You can see that I have a screenshot of what it looks like. Uh, so I could change the image if I wanted to. I can view it in 3D or I can start working on it. Um, it's totally up to you. Uh, and this thing is really just a powerful tool that allows you to create all kinds of stuff in any way you choose. Uh, as long as you put the time and effort into it. Uh, just one other quick thing real quick uh, is I'm based in the United States, uh, so we don't really use millimeters. Uh, so I can go ahead and edit the grid here real fast and I can change my default units over to inches and I can set the width or length of my work plane uh, to kind of be able to set there. They also have 3D printing sizes ready to go. Uh, so like I have a Dremel 3D20, I can click on that and it'll set the build plate for me automatically so that when I'm designing stuff, I know I can't go outside of this work plane or else I won't be able to print it because it would be too large. Uh, one final note here, um, if I would go 3D print this thing, um, this is area right here is a pretty large overhang. Um, depending on my printer, it may or may not do a good job with this. I know personally mine's not going to do a good job with that. So I'm going to unlock those and I'm going to group them together just for a moment. Uh, and then from there, what I want to do is I'm going to lay this thing down. I'm going to rotate it on its side. So I'm going to go negative 90 degrees. And then I will bring that down to zero. You'll notice how the measurements now, it says one eighth instead of uh, the millimeters. Uh, I have that there. Uh, and then I can ungroup these with the Control Shift G, uh, and I can leave them like that, or I can put them back in. 
Uh, but when you're going for 3D printing or really a lot of design work, try to make it in a way that's going to make sense. Uh, if I'm just making a visual design and this is, let's say, a door to a house that I'm making, um, I'm going to leave it standing up. But if this is a door to a house that I'm making that I want to 3D print, I'll turn it down like this and then export the STL file uh, for printing so that I don't have any overhangs or anything else. Uh, but that's a real quick kind of... Uh, view into Tinkercad. There's lots and lots of cool stuff you can do here and I'll make future videos about all the different things that you can look at and do inside of there. Uh, but this is just a good introduction to what you can do in Tinkercad and please let me know if you have any questions.